Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike Oplin with Engearment.com, and for the past couple of weeks, I've been able to demo the Quiet Cat Ibex full suspension electronic mountain bike in urban settings, in the neighborhood, dirt trails, and single track here in the front range, testing build quality, features, and capability, both eco mode and sport mode, trying to determine if an e bike is missing from my own garage. In this video, we'll go over the controls on the left handlebar show you the LED interface, both reviewing sport mode, eco mode, and walk mode. We'll give you a close up of the charge port on the down tube, as well as talk through our features and what we enjoyed most about using this bike on single track in the front range. Let's jump into the video. So first off, let's show the control on the left handlebar. You have a throttle only uh, pressure button where application of the electronic motor torque is applied without pedal assist. You have your plus and minus set points for your eco mode or sport mode. Each one of those modes has five set points, one through five for torque application. There's also a zero level where no, no electronic torque is applied via the motor. You have the information bu button that toggles uh, various information on the LED screen, odometer, maximum speed, things of that nature. On the Ibex, the light button, can dim the LED screen, and then you have your power on button here, which turns your LED interface on as well as prepares your battery for use. So if we hold down our power on button, what you will see is the quiet cap boot screen. And then your speedometer as well as your power meter are shown here. Obviously you can see what mode we're in. We're in eco mode at this time. We're at setting number one. Uh, trip we've just completed was 35 miles local time as well as battery percentage if i go over and toggle the information button you can see that the odometer we've gotten 67 miles of testing on on this model maximum speed i was able to reach 52 miles per hour that was on a downhill in sport mode at the maximum setting of five our average miles per hour that includes mixed use both on urban sidewalks and terrain, uh, front range dirt trails, as well as single track outside of Golden, Colorado, as well as battery range that's left. In this current example, since we are in eco mode on a setting of one, predicted range is 81 miles. If we change our mode setting from one to two, the quiet cow algorithm references battery state of charge and makes a prediction on expected range within those modes. So as we toggle through the modes, you can see and expect the range to decrease as you're applying more power in each one of those mode settings. Now let's jump over to the sport mode. So to change over to sport mode, all you do is hold up on the plus sign on your control and the interface changes from green eco to red sport mode. Again, in the same fashion, as you increase or decrease your mode set points, Quiet Cat's algorithm predicts expected range in those settings. A zero is a no electronic torque applied. You would be pedaling the full weight of the bike. This Ibex model does weigh 70 pounds. This is a size large. I am five foot nine and the large frame seem to fit me just fine. The other cool feature that Quiet Cat offers is a walk mode. We found ourselves using this mode most often in tight single track switchbacks, where on the upside of the switchback, there could be additional mud with how much rain we've been getting or slippery rock interfaces. And so what you do to interface that walk mode is you hold down the minus on the control interface. And what will happen is the algorithm will change over to only apply a small amount of electronic torque to the rear wheel to help you move the bike under minimal load. So there's an example of the walk mode. Again, we found most useful in switchbacks. Another feature we wanted to show was the charging port and what that interface looked like. Quiet Cat gives you a nice uh, rubber gasket and grommet to try to keep as much mud as possible and water out of there. There's the charging interface. I'll show you the cable here in a second. It is keyed, so there, that means there is only one way to plug in the connector uh, to perform charging. 
Another feature we really liked of the Ibex was the 140 millimeter front fork. As you can see here from our grease ring, we almost maxed out travel here. We were running approximately 20, 22 PSI of tire pressure in the front and rear. Quiet Cat on the tire has stamped that you can run these up to 30 PSI. At 20, 22, we, we found ride compliance uh, more than sufficient for, for the trail riding that we were doing. The Ibex in the rear has a RockShox Monarch air suspension uh, single mono tube. Again, we had this pre-dialed for my weight and size 5'9", roughly 180 pounds. And with some of our big bumps, again, you can see we, we almost got through full range of travel here. So as always with air suspension, make sure you set your preload pre and droop uh, appropriately from a PSI standpoint relative to your body weight and riding style. Two of the features I was actually concerned about when I initially picked up the bike from our director of Stoke, Sean Sewell in Denver, were the flat pedals as well as the kickstand. Initial impressions with Sean were I was going to swap these out during our demo days to my SPDs. Uh, again, because I've grown up and I'm used to having SPDs on my mountain bikes. Um, after initial riding and characterization in the neighborhood and on uh, after initial characterization in the neighborhood, decided I will stick with the flat pedals, just again, due to the bike weight and being unfamiliar with the bike. I'm glad I did. I think after a season or two of getting familiar, I might get the SPD on one side, flat pedal on the other side uh, as an interface that I'd like. So this is the charging module and I will show you the keyed interface of the cable again helping you only interface and made it one direction into the bike frame. One of the other features that's really cool is the SRAM X5 shifter has an integrated interrupt and what I mean there is that when you are applying both pedal power and electric torque as you are riding and you perform a shift there's an interrupt signal that disables electric torque in the motor while the shift is occurring and as soon as the shift is complete, electric torque is reapplied as you continue pedaling following your shift. Another feature we wanted to show you guys just so you can get a visual is the chain ring can move being driven off the electric motor or when you are pedaling using the electric motor as an assist. So then if you're used to a coaster or freewheel hub, similar, similar kind of design or idea where torque is only applied from your pedal force and the electronic motor depending on which sport or eco mode setting you're at. So having reviewed all the features and things that we enjoyed about the Quiet Cat Ibex, do I wish I had one in the garage? Yes. Am I converted to electronic bikes? I'm on the fence. What it reminds me of is when you're a kid riding around in the neighborhood and you have endless amount of time and an endless amount of energy. That's what these e-bikes for me equate to. So rides that come to mind for me include Moab, Slick Rock, Fins and Things, even the Porcupine Rim, being able to ride up Squall Pass, Mount Evans, being able to take this on the Colorado Trail if you had a team that was willing to do charging or battery swaps for you. Uh, anything in the Silverton Telluride area, Crested Butte to Crystal to Marble come to mind. Being able to ride this Rollinsville over to Winter Park and meet your family there for lunch or dinner those type of rides come to mind. Also, if folks aren't familiar with the brand, please go to their website and check out a couple of different models that offer different options as far as storage here on the back, uh, be it overlanding, be it hunting, fishing, those type of things. Quiet Cat does have a range of accessories, including bike racks, cup holders, charging, solar charge kits, uh, and different accessories that might fit really well depending on what your use is gonna be.